Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is July 21st, 2022. This is episode 525, I believe. I might get this wrong, but anyway, as, as I'm doing this video, I'm actually uploading another one that I just did, Pramuthi. That was a not recommend. This is a not recommend either. Another one starting with P, Prodigy. Number one, the Icarus Society. This is coming out from Image Comics. It's the first debut of this particular series, and it's a Mark Millar. I'm a little disappointed at Mark on this one. I must say, this is a not recommend. So we have our our hero here, and I'm drawing a blank on who what his name is, and this is actually the super villain that he's up again. Now, this thing kind of reads like a... Oh my God, uh, Buckaroo Banzai, James Bond type char character, but he's also like the world's smartest man at the same time. However, the way this goes, as you read it, it almost seems like an Austin Powers uh, joke going along until the very, very end of the first issue where we find out what the story is going to be all about. So let's take a quick look to see who worked on this. We have Mark Millar as the writer. The artist is Matteo Buffani. I don't know how to say that. The colorist is Laura Martin. I pardon me on that. The letter is Clem Robbins and design production Melanie McLuck and all the rest. Cover on this was also Matteo's. Take a quick look at the cover again. We have this swirl thing. So, anyway, uh, it starts out, and we're at a crime scene. And it's one of about four or five that has occurred where these people have just exploded. It turns out that they had the surgery done a while back, and the guy who did the surgery, this evil doctor, as we see here, implanted this miniature explosive in all of them. So they all had these horrific... Yes, and you can see all the people are there. So they call in Edison Crane, Dr. Edison Crane. He is this guy here. And he is super duper man. And you'll see in just a while as we go through this comic. So you can see the different people exploding at different times. This one exploded on a bus. This guy was driving a semi. Um, and they're trying to figure it out. So they call in Edison Crane. The Pentagon calls him out. Because when they can't figure things out, they go to him. Okay, so we have this whole thing where they, he goes into a hostage situation. It turns out to be his nemesis right here, this guy. Um, and I don't remember his name. Maybe it'll pop up here. But you see, he's like written all this stuff up here. It's like, okay, that makes no sense. Why? I don't know. Don't ask. So it goes along... And we see um, Edison Crane sneaking up on the doctor. But the doctor's expecting him. And uh, Lucius Young? Is that his name? Tong. You see, you see Tong. There you go. He is the evil guy. And they're both, the, both these guys are doctors. And they kind of spar dialogue way back and forth. But um, he's actually just the day before, transplanted chimpanzee hands on himself because he found that the chimpanzee hands actually have more articulation than a human hand, and he was able to perform more intricate operations with these hands. So there you go. you got the police outside this hospital in this hostage situation. Apparently all these people have these minute explosives inside of them, and then we get this flashback where Edison Crane is getting beat up by these thugs. But don't worry, because he gets out of it eventually. But, but here's another flashback where he's going to race a cheetah. So as you, like I said, he is multi-talented and everything else. So you can see him starting to get away from this gang. He flips over last minute when they're going to shoot him, breaking the cuffs. He's racing the cheetah here. Um, he's taking down all the bad guys here. He's also 
in Paris receiving some kind of award, one of many because he is Edison, Dr. Edison Crane, Superman, superhuman, I should say. Um, yeah, so he's fighting off these thugs. They all come at him. In the meantime, he is at this, his special lab. This is not a special, this is another flashback, lifting all this weight. You can see he's strong, but he's also taking in like 25 programs at once. Well, not programs, but people are reading him books on these different screens all at once, and he's able to tell what's going on in each book and just taking in all that knowledge. So it just kind of goes on and on about how great he is. It turns out this group of thugs that are beating him up, he actually hired them so he could stay sharp. It was uh, his own doing. Um, and then we have him go off. You can see uh, he's beating these guys up pretty bad too. <laughs> he goes off and it looks like he's being followed by somebody here. I'm not, I, I really just at this point, it just kept going on and on like this. He meets this, I, I guess she's some kind of princess or something. Because um, he was at some kind of bachelor auction. I must have missed that. He was up for, uh, here we go. I'm sorry, all this was, he was up for auction. And for millions, the betting started at one million. And who knows what it ended at. But uh, he goes to lunch with this woman and of course leaves her spellbound. Another flashback, he's like rock climbing while reading. He can just about do anything. Then he flashes back to his father, who's saying, uh, you know, this is your entire her inheritance. Because his father is rich and powerful, and he just throws him a coin. And he, the son, who is Edison Crane, is a younger younger man here, just says, I'm going to turn this into a billion within a year, this one coin. So there you go. Meantime, we've got um, this... His, uh, I guess he has a quick love affair. But the whole thing is a scam. He is being set up by this Dr. Tong. All he does not know it at the time. And then he's got this floating apparatus. Um, we've seen certain things like this. like They're kind of like a drone, that a computerized drone that talks to him and everything. So, oh my God, it goes on and on. He... This, he starts to write a book about Clark Gable, his hero, back in the... Uh, he's, he's kind of obsessed with him. He realizes it won't sell after doing all this work on it. You can see here's this montage. He, dis he just destroys it just because he says, oh, it's not going to sell anyway. No one cares about Clark Gable any longer. And, uh, yeah, just kind of... I, I guess since this guy has no real faults other than hubris um it's hard to like him and i think that's the issue that i had with this just i just didn't like him he gets is um gets one up by that woman he just slept with back there not expecting it because i guess she won the auction for him if i got that right and uh then he finds out that he's actually being played by dr tong and I can't remember even what the thing was. Oh, he's got point. I, I can't remember. He's Dr. Tong's actually in prison. So he's doing this whole thing with, while he's in prison because he pre-recorded the entire episode before he was sent to prison for setting the explosives in those people. And that's kind of how it ends. He challenges... Edison Crane to, uh, you know, beat the entire club of the Icarus Society. So there you go. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Mark. I couldn't like this one. Now you can take a look at the collection that Mark Millar has put out. Jupiter's Legacy, Magic the Order. I think that was called Kick-Ass. So some of these you might recognize. Reborn. Closer. I can't really read that font. I did read Starlight all the way through. That was pretty good. And you know, Kick Ass was made into a couple movies. I got Spider Man in there, Civil War, very popular series that he did. 
few years back. And he also did Kingsman and Wanted. Those were very, very good, uh, very well-liked um, movies as well. Prodigy. I think that was well-reviewed. I did not read it. Super Crooks, 1985 Nemesis, da da da. So he's got put out a lot of stuff. He has the Millar World, which he has this big um, contract with Netflix. Edison Crane is the world's smartest man. But what happens when he meets a criminal mastermind even smarter than he is and a secret society of geniuses who are using their own using him for their own ends, Prodigy, the Icarus Society, starts a brand new five-issue series and a perfect jumping on point for the discerning new reader. Well, I discern that I do not like this book, um, unfortunately. So this is cover A. came in at a whopping $3.99. It is a not recommend by me. You know, it might turn out to be a pretty good story, but judging from the first issue, it really didn't catch me. The... I just didn't like the main character. There was nothing to like about him. Maybe he gets beaten down to a point where he becomes more humbled or something. But right now, you know, it's just a situation of putting the most resourceful man in the world in a spot and he has to get his way out. And, well, he's going to do more than just MacGyver his way out. You can guess. So there you have it. All right, so thanks for stopping by and watching this YouTube video review of Prodigy Number 1, The Icarus Society. As always, please like, please subscribe, please leave comments, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. This is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.